going up the um, getting um, quite a lot of vibration I think we have to um, eventually bolt this thing down to a piece of steel frame but it's cutting quite aggressively in, uh, in Delrin making me some uh, end plates for um, my next project which is the um, mini mill milling machine with CNC uh, Proxon MF70 mill which is adaptable for um, CNC milling uh, over here we can see the program running and if I go and have a look at the tool path here see how it's cutting around the feed rate is quite fast with Delrin uh, if you go too slow it rubs it and it's not as good at, uh, you want to get chips flying really which is doing now you can see little bits flying out of it and that's the way it likes otherwise if you go too slow it rubs it and then you're in trouble but it makes a lot of noise um, as you can see but yeah, generally speaking, going well. So we're down to around about half a millimetre a cut, which is quite a deep cut, uh, but it can it can stand it. So when I get to uh, aluminium, we'll be going a lot uh, slower and a lot uh, finer cuts. But I just want to make these um, these end plates. This is the one that it made uh, today. Um, basically, goes on the end of. It's a very similar X Y table to this, so it goes on the end there. But it's got two additional holes here. What's the matter, Alf? Oh, I don't like the noise. Oh. We're going to see James then. That's my exotic wood stack, uh, Craig. Lots of um, little boxwood. And some other bits and pieces. Some um, ebony, coco bolo, more coco bolo, little bits. Um, other rosewood. There. There's more down here. And down here in there, Alf. Oh, and bits over here as well. All sorts, that's another rosewood. Hmm. Anyway, making a lot of noise for the day. Well, that should soon be finished. It's going, I think it's his last cut now. Next one. At the moment, what it's doing is you'll see it goes along and then it lifts up there and that's just to give it a little bit of a, a tag so it doesn't go as deep in four places and the little um, you get little tabs here and here and here and here and here and here so that it doesn't fly off when it gets cut through. You can see the, uh, the cut there. Good day. Anyway, we'll turn this off for the day, driving everybody absolutely bonkers in the house. But so far we haven't needed, I'm gonna, I've decided to make the, um, the shoe for the dust extractor out of Delrin because this this is a plastic that um, is like a it's called a sea towel and it and it actually doesn't melt when you get a high-speed bit on it all the other plastics don't like doing this because they just melt and then you get the, the tip gets bunged up and it doesn't cut so but this is this is now cutting its final bit that should drop now to 3.2 millimeters and then do a skip yep. And the actual
total depth is 3.2 millimeters around except for two or three places four places um, thickness of the sheet is three millimeters so it's cutting through except for those little tags and when it gets to the end which will be very shortly you will see my brush downstairs. Postman Keith came and um, Alfie, Alfie went mad so I left I had to leave my brush downstairs. Stand a little bit further back. The further back you stand the, the easier it is to not be deaf. And you can hear it's actually cutting through it. It's a different sound. Done. Right, I just stop the um, pause this while I stop the um, motor. Okay, now what we're doing is we're just doing a tidy up cut at high speed. This will just basically tidy up the um, the rest of the um, the bearing pocket and the rest of the the edges around it. Okay, now we're just um, tidying up the uh, the edges of all the should clean most of this off. You can see it's going along, it's chucking out all sorts of crap. I'll let that run. So it's still tidying up loose ends. Quite accurate. And repeatable, so that's good. And you can see the actual bits of Delrin flying out, which is a good sign. It means that it's it's cutting properly. So I think we got the feed rate spot on. Little curlies coming up, as you can see, flying off. Brilliant. Just the way we want it to uh, to work. Here we see the um, the axes doing their job here. This is the x-axis. Get the light right. Light on the back. Every so often, the X axis on the back. We should have got around there. And we can see that working away there. So this um, this uh, X axis is pretty accurate. It's uh, it was part of an old um, Yamaha robot in uh, Japan. Came up on eBay, so the whole thing is pretty well professional. You can see the bearings at the end here, and down inside here, you could just about see the see the screw. Just about there you go. Pull that along here, which is turning. We're coming around now to do the last few passes just to get rid of all this crap. Ok, 
Okay, so we've done a few cleanup passes. I'm just raising the Z axis here. As you can see, quite fast just to when he gets to the end stop. And just to brush it off. Now, here, what we need to do is get a Stanley knife and we should be able to cut the first two tags cut through those probably not the best idea in the world to um, use a Stanley knife to while you're filming and then with a screwdriver which I've temporarily lost there it is. You should be able to prise up the other bits like that. Cut in through the other tags. There's one there, there's one there, and one on that side. That should make it a lot easier to break off. better stop filming for a second while I cut this out and through the wonders of um, trick photography anyway it's popped out and I've just trimmed it a little bit there is a bit of uh, obviously there's bits of um, plastic left on the edges but they just trimmed down with some sandpaper or some or a sharp edge which I'll do later but now so we've got two um, end plates <clears throat> which we can use for um, the new mini mill which is what I'm going to do next, put the bearings in and get the X and Y axes working and then the Z axis is already done so that should be the next project almost finished and then we can try it out but I'm quite pleased with those and it is actually quite a strong you can't you can't bend it at this thickness you just about bend it um, so that should be well rigid Apparently, also, Dalrin is, is, is preferred for things like brackets um, because it reduces the noise vibration, um, so it, it kind of absorbs it. So that's another thing I'm hoping um, will come out of that. But all in all, having got the program sorted out, and let me just show you the, the template here, if I can find the mouse. Um, This is the the whole thing here, and you can see how it's. Um, or if I point the camera at it, you will. You can see how it's it's been designed um, to to give you um, these these brackets. Um, so yeah, quite happy with that. And that's it for the well that's it for today completely now because i'm exhausted with all this brain work um it's, it's a lot of work going on here um in the background and uh, a lot of trial and error and uh alfie's got so tired he's fallen asleep haven't you are you falling asleep is that quieter oh and also i've got i've got some reading to do oh and i got an excellent today Got another project here. Now that's going to be something quite interesting. That is one hell of a thick um, blade, 
really acute skew on it and that's going to pr prove to be quite useful in my in my next um, project hopefully so anyway that's it for today say goodbye Ebor bye Alfie bye everybody <laughs>